episode 86. Are you ready to take your eBay business to the next level? Then hold on, because Ron and Ali are going to take you into the fast lane with the latest tips and insights from some of the biggest and most successful sellers here on the So You Want to Sell on eBay podcast. Welcome once again to another episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. I'm Ron LeBeau. And I'm Ali Young. Hey, everyone. We have with us Chris Kellogg-Garrison. Chris, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm doing good here in St. Louis. How about you, Ali? I am doing fantastic. Now Chris is on. This is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. We're excited to have you on here, Chris. Thanks uh, for having appreciate me. Definitely, definitely. Now, Chris is an avid quilter who turned her hobby into an eBay quilt store. She began selling fabric and patterns on eBay to generate extra income while Click Creative, her graphic design and online media marketing company, got off the ground. Fast forward three years, and that eBay side gig has become her main gig, the Click Creative Boutique. Love it. The side gig to the main gig. So, I mean, this is brilliant. How did you become like a graphic designer? I vision you there. You know, you're smoking a cigar. You're you're creating these wonderful graphics and you think one day oh i should become a quilter <laughs> well yeah you just nailed it that's totally how it happened <laughs> Did it, was it cigar, yeah. was a cigar bit correct as well or was it, am exactly. i just going a bit far with that one exactly i bet you can't guess the brand but yeah <laughs> I, that's pretty pretty close cool yes so i became a graphic designer just kind of discovered I had a skill for it. Um, I took my first paid job in 1997. But before that, anywhere that I worked, it always seemed like they ended up having me do a newsletter or signs or whatever. And so I just kind of happened into it. And um, that's how it went. Um, I started quilting in 2003, um, after my first child left home to kind of, you know, keep me busy and keep me from obsessing <laughs> and like totally being interfering in his life 100%. Um, nice. And it, it just kind of took off from there. I discovered that I had a real passion for it. And uh, quilting isn't uh, like you, like people who don't quilt think of quilting a little differently than I think of it. For me, it's more of an art form. Uh, it's I just say it's not your grandmother's quilting. That's it. So. That, that's the vision I have, you know, an old lady, you know, lonely at home quilting. But no, it's not. It can be fun. Yes. Yeah, it is totally fun. There's big shows that people go to. There's art quilts. Uh, There's a big show here in Oregon, in Sisters, Oregon, that happens every July. And there are just some amazing quilts there. People create portraits and quilts. And I've seen quilts there for sale for tens of thousands of dollars. So it's, it's a big... A big deal. I didn't even realize what a big deal it was when I got into it. My friend Mary Potts was my quilt mentor, and she kept telling me I should get into it. I kept being like, ah, nah, because I thought of it the way that people think of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, That's I right. Make yeah. These little old, you know, country quilts, <laughs> but, you know, everybody gets their own style, like uh, an artist who paints in watercolor or oils does. It's a similar thing. So, Well, that's pretty amazing, but I want to go back just a little bit to the graphic design thing. See, we kind of stepped <laughs> right over that, and I'm thinking to yeah. myself, in 1990s, in the late 1990s, you mm. didn't really have, like, the Photoshop we have today, right? I mean, you're doing some basic, basic I mean, graphic design with what <laughs> kind of tools are you using? Oh, this is embarrassing. Okay, so um, my I love parents, it already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're just, you're kind of like, <laughs> so, so um, my parents gave me their old Mac, and this was 1997. Wow. So it, it was in the kilobytes of storage space, I believe. <laughs> oh, my word. No. And, and before that time, like I said, I had done some design, you know, at, at previous employers, again, on rudimentary computer systems. And I don't remember the software that I used. Um, I don't remember the software on the Mac. Stick but Man Plus? Basically, that's yeah. about what it was. But, I mean, I made my wedding invitations. My husband's and my wedding invitations, I made those on on the mac you know just with some clip art and stuff so yeah no actually kudos to you i mean seriously because we have 
you know, I've got Adobe CS6 and it's got all these yep. bells and whistles. Yeah, I don't right. have to do hardly anything. It does it all, right? But I'm yeah. just, I'm saying back in the day when you were doing it, you were actually earning a living. I mean, Ali right. Ali is fantastic with Photoshop well, and he's taught it. me a whole lot about stop it. Stop it, Ron. Um, yeah, well, you pay me well to say that. <laughs> yeah, Ali. yeah, yeah. Sponsored <laughs> but by anyhow, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But I, I'm just thinking back in 19 late 1990s, man, I don't know that I'd want to say anything that I'd but you know, enjoy uh, doing graphic design back then. Yeah, it it was it was fun, and I worked for a local um, classified newspaper that actually had a typesetter, and you know the tape, uh, the lines on tape that you and you would lay everything out with the wax roller. So oh, that was cool. really old school. We yeah. didn't, you know, do uh, good. Yeah, <laughs> so it's I, it's always just happened, um, you know, that I I happened into it. But when Photoshop first came out. Or I don't know if it was out by that time, but I, I, you know, used some of the first versions of Photoshop. I've been using Adobe products ever since I started, you know, using software professionally for graphic design. So it's really fun. And do you use that to help with the quilts? Like I, I really don't know much about quilting here, so you're gonna have to hang in here, Chris. All right. So but, to- could you create something in one of these graphic things and then sort of make it look like that in real life on the quilt? Yeah, sometimes I use, see, all, everything that I do kind of goes together. It fits mm-hmm. together really nicely. The graphic design, you know, it's artistic and it goes along with the quilting. I create a lot of my marketing materials in graphic design and I also do quilt layouts or presentations for clients in that kind of medium. Um, so if I want to do a, a quilt pattern kind of layout you know i will i'll I'll sometimes use photoshop or indesign to do that so Mm. and i I definitely use that to design my labels for my quilts it's just it's a great melding of Mm. the of the two mediums they're all artistic you know and it 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 just works well together so yeah and you make a living doing it wow how cool is that and you're doing this full time now right oh gosh more than full time because you know, I started the business with graphic design, and I also do um, online media marketing uh, with that business Jeez. and Click Creative. So it, it goes together well. Is there um, anything that, that you don't do? Uh, smoke cigars. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't, uh, skydive or base yeah, jump. Oh, you, don't, you don't do that wild quilting skydiving. Never tried it. That could be like well, something new. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, God, it must be so there's a lot at of your house. <laughs> it, it must be so much cool at your house, you know. Just so how yeah. do you, how do you get into eBay then? Did you see that this was a way to actually finally sell this stuff? I mean, why why start on eBay selling this stuff? Well, originally, um, I I started. I, I here. Let me give you a little bit of background. Okay. So in uh, October of 2013, I had I had been working for about seven years at a nonprofit. I was a communications manager. I was basically doing what I do now, minus the quilting. Okay. Um, at, at, for a nonprofit agency, and in, in October, I I got really sick, and I had to take a medical leave of absence. All right. So then in in January, I decided that maybe I should uh, open my own business uh, that would allow me some more flexibility. And the business was that I was opening was Click Creative, and it was graphic design and online media marketing and communications. And as you well know, when you start a business, it kind of, you know, it takes a while to get going. And in order to fund that, and also because uh, during the downtime and being at home, I was going through my house and kind of decluttering all this clutter that had built up um, after seven years of working, you know, more than full time. So I started thinking, well, I can sell that on eBay. I'd been a member since 2003 and never really sold a lot. So I started selling um, some of my fabric and patterns and books that I didn't need anymore because, oh, God, I have so much in my <laughs> own personal <laughs> stash, still like a small quilt store. So I started selling that. And all of a sudden, I it, it was it just took off. It was like an aha moment. And I realized that that could be a, a money making stream. And it was also quite fun because uh, since I was well, when I was a little kid, 
one of my favorite games was playing store and my parents still uh, kind of kid me about that. So, you know, I got to play store and it was really, really fun. And I kind of got addicted to it. because I had. <laughs> I mean, I'm a quilter. What better thing to do than run a quilt store? Yeah, all and, right, for sure. And, Who could blame you? Yeah. yeah, it worked out really well. And it still does when I have downtime for my business because graphic design and being a, a, a independent contractor, it's feast or famine. Okay. <laughs> and so when I don't have a full client load, I can concentrate fully on eBay. When I do have a full client load, I can do as much or as little as I want. It's, mm. it's like my dream job basically. Right. Right. So that's yeah. awesome. Ron and Ali will be right back after this short break. Are you looking to boost sales by selling your products on eBay? The M2E Pro extension makes it easy by quickly integrating your existing Magento store into eBay. By installing M2E Pro, you can easily create listings across all 23 major eBay marketplaces, including eBay Motors. Using M2E's intuitive interface, you can also set controls to manage your listings, including automated syncing of inventory, pricing, and product details. As sales are completed on eBay, M2E will import all your transactions and process them as Magento orders. It will even allow you to send feedback for the buyer automatically, all from within your Magento store administration. And you can rest assured knowing the M2E extension is certified by both Magento and eBay. M2E Pro. Selling on eBay made easy. Try M2E Pro for 60 days with no obligation. After that, if your eBay sales are still less than $10,000, you can continue using our solution completely free of charge. We truly support SMEs. Do you want to set yourself apart from other eBay sellers? Want to look like one of the big brands? How would you like to feel confident that you could do it yourself, but know that the support is there if you get stuck? Now you can create your branded eBay store and have your store doing more. With Auction Pro Templates Premium Do-It-Yourself eBay Template. This template is loaded with tools and features you won't find in any other system. Go to yourstoredoingmore.com now to see what's included. That's yourstoredoingmore.com. Be sure to check out so you want to sell on eBay.com for the latest podcasts and all the information you need to get selling fast. When you started this and you, and you actually kind of started doing the quilt thing and then you kind of turned it into a, into a business, did mm-hmm. you have a fear that you would lose the uh, the desire to do it? I mean, sometimes people, you know, have a hobby and they turn the hobby into a business and all of a sudden it more, it's more like work and it doesn't it yeah. takes away from the hobby part of it. Did that did you have that fear or anything like that? Actually, yes. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um and, you know, what I sell in my eBay store in the boutique is is quilting supplies. It's all the fabric and notions and all that kind of stuff. But I also do what you touched on is I make quilts for people. I do commissioned quilts or sometimes like I'll make a quilt that's not for anyone specific and I'll list it in my store. But I did worry in the back of my mind, you know, if this becomes a job, if I have to do this, you know, will I end up hating it? And I just thought, well, I'll see. And so far, no. So far, I love it more. <laughs> um, awesome. I just, right. I just finished a really cool quilt commission. And I was actually sad for that to end. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to my next quilt commission. But I still have fun. When I'm working on a job, it's like I can't wait to get to be able to play with my fabric and list new items in the oh, store. It's, I love it. I mean, that, I know. that is really cool. It I mean, my, I was scared. just thinking, you know, I was just thinking if, if that's what you did, uh, uh-huh. like during with, with your job, if that's what you did to, you know, relieve, you know, your, the pressures and stress, what do you do now um, to relieve the pressure and stress <laughs> that, that replaces that? I mean, you know, you kind of did, you turn it into a job. So now what do you do? Well, it still doesn't feel like a job. It feels yeah, like play. Exactly. It's so I, you know, I mean, I know that sounds cliche and all that kind of stuff. There's, I haven't worked on a quilt yet or in the store yet. Well, where, where I've not woken up looking forward to doing it. Maybe that'll happen in the future, but you know, to relieve 
the stress of the graphic design or working with clients, I often find myself quilting. But I have other things I do to balance it out. It's not like I'm just like, <laughs> You're quilting you know? all day long, yeah. Well, Ollie, you know, I think maybe I'm going to start quilting. It yeah, sounds like I it's... Could, <laughs> I, I can vision you doing it, really, bro. Yeah, if, yeah, if we could get some video of that, that would be awesome. <laughs> Oh, That'd you can imagine the stress relief because, um, you know, I don't use scissors to cut my material. That's kind of old school. I use really sharp rotary cutters. They're like razor blades, like ninja wow. blades. Ninja and blades. Yes, we've got a ninja online. <laughs> no doubt, man. No wonder why you got stress relief, man. You're yeah. cutting things up. Man. Yeah, I just get to cut things up and sew them back together. <laughs> you do a little right. roll before you cut it. Do you roll forward and you slice it open? got a ninja yeah, like her you know yeah so what's the um what's the like the what's the longest quilt you can make have you are you not going to go for the world record of quilt no maybe maybe the most number of quilts made in a lifetime but the biggest quilt i've ever made is, is a king size just standard how big um, standard yeah not that out in a day standard. yeah not much no biggie yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, so how right, long exactly. would a how long would a standard take <laughs> well, it depends on what size um, quilt it is. The quilt that I just made and sent off that I was telling you about took me three months from conception <laughs> oh, to finish. Geez. Okay, wow. but that isn't three months of working on it every day. That is maybe altogether 20, 27, 28 days, somewhere in there. So, you know, I don't start working on a quilt and then... I don't, it's not like I don't stop. So what until happens if you get an order in? What happens if you get an order in for like 10 of them? How, how do you do that? Uh, I only take on three clients at one time and that's three clients for, and that's combined with graphic design and quilts. So if right. I have two graphic design or two of my click creative clients, right? Like uh, for graphic design or online media, then I'll only take on one. I have a waiting list. So that's how that works. I, I, wow. I, I can't you take got a on a regular quilting celebrity. Here, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm totally not really. I, yeah. I, I know quilting celebrities and I'm not there yet. Um, so there's such well, a thing. In, my wor- in our world, you are. How's that? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, but in I don't fact, our that. show notes page is going to say Chris, the celebrity, the quilter. I think, yeah, oh, you can say that. It's just, it might tick off some of the actual quilting. <laughs> <for you. laughs> but hey, if I don't say it, what can I do? You know? Exactly. So- you know, and I, I'm on your website right now, the clickcreative.com, and it's really kind of cool. And if you go to Boutique, if you're listening and you, you want to see her eBay store, if you just click on Boutique, you'll go to her eBay store. And I'm telling you, if I were into quilting or anything like quilting, I would definitely come to your website or your eBay store because you've got books, you've got patterns, you've got crocheting, knitting everything here i mean seriously you've uh, you've done this uh, for a little while here and you've got a lot of products on here it looks really nice your store does thank you thank you i wanted to make my store feel like um like it feels to go into your local quilt shop and um if if your listeners if some of your listeners are quilters they'll know there's a certain feel when you go into a nice locally owned mom and pop kind of quilt shop it's very warm and inviting quilters have a sort of community um and i wanted to make my online store have that same look tone and feel because i also have a marketing background that's one of the things that goes along with of course you have a marketing background. of course well that was that was the one thing we didn't talk about yeah yeah, absolutely (laughs) guys they all go together communications manager and online media you have to you have to have you have to know marketing because you're marketing for your clients but so when i started focusing that marketing on myself um and making myself a client so to speak um i just used those same principles and i wanted people to feel that same feeling and get that same level of service or as close to it as i can as you would if you walked into a local quilt store Mm. Um, and i don't want to compete with local quilt stores because i don't um i don't compete with you know brick and mortar stores i'm kind of a supplement to those things where people can find out of print or vintage fabrics or you know something they can't find uh, say if they don't live close to uh, there's people who don't live close to a place where they can buy fabric, so they primarily have to buy online. So that's the service I provide. 
Wow, it's I've got Very so nice. many questions I can ask you, and I'm just trying. I'm trying to find a pen. And I can't write these down. But what, one, one, one of them is you mentioned. Are starting to come out. You mentioned vintage, you know, and also, what? I mean, how, I, I'm I'm really lost here. So when you say vintage, how do you find this old old material? Was it down the local vintage shop? And you, yeah, oh look, there's a lovely bit of fabric. I mean, where are you getting this stuff? I don't imagine you're just popping down Tesco's. No, no. And what's Tesco? Is that like a grocery yeah. store? Oh my, what's Tesco's? Oh, sorry. What is I'm Tesco? in the Ameri let me let me rephrase that. Walmart <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> what's Tesco's? Oh, okay. Well, now I know. Now I know. See, it, it's, so. it's hard sometimes because you know we're in the American thing here, and I, I gotta I gotta translate everything. You know. I'm sorry. That's okay. For being That's okay. Don't no, be so sorry. There, the... I mean, where are you getting this stuff? Where, where are you getting this wonderful, beautiful material from? Well, I get them from all kinds of places. And like you had mentioned, um, sometimes I will happen upon um, fabric in a, in a vintage store. But what I do is I hand out my business card a lot. Um, and I do private buys. A lot of times a quilter will do like I did and kind of clean out their stash. It's called de-stashing, right? And your fabric <laughs> like, is called the stash. Sounds so cool. Of, so sometimes the quilter is selling all of their stash or part of it, maybe <laughs> – you know, it was really popular at the end of the 60s. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It took on a whole new meaning back then, but yeah, yeah he's stashing. Like, Here's Chris it? collecting all stash. <laughs> I, go exactly. ahead, Chris. It's I'm all so yours. Sorry. Now you got me laughing about no, I have a place. No, to no, sorry, we, have a, we, we affect people like that on this show. Sorry. Yeah. I, I've listened, sir. I know. <laughs> so, so a lot of times um, a quilter will want to sell some of their stash <laughs> and um, maybe some of their quilting tools or books, patterns, whatever. Um, and then it just seemed to snowball when I started doing that and I get a lot of referrals. I used to run an ad on Craigslist. I don't do that anymore. Um, sometimes I go to estate sales and I've found some good finds there. Although you have to be careful um, there to make sure it's, you know, um, clean and it's not smelly. Um, yeah. Things like yes. That. I also you take on real vintage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I charge extra if there's a smell. So, yeah. Yeah, but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Really super careful with what I buy. I'm very selective. Um, and then I do some consignments as well. Um, so, and then I have some secret sources that I can't really tell you about. Oh, but no. Oh, you can tell us. Nobody's <laughs> listening. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, yeah, I just I have some good sources and, mm -hmm. and that's how I made it work. At first, it was really, you know, I had to kind of figure out how am I going to keep this um, this product coming in? And now it's just kind of it works like butter. It's like butter. butter. It just all <laughs> in. Yeah, it's very smooth. It's, it's yeah, it's very smooth. It's easy once you get it. It takes some time to start developing um, those sources for the product, but it's it's good now. So, so I'm sure all those stores around you that have any kind of fabric see you come in and they think, oh yeah, here comes Chris again. Yeah, <laughs> here she comes. Yeah. For the stuff. Yeah, there there is a local store that um, is a vintage thrift kind of store, and they call me the Quilt Lady. Oh, so, is that good? Uh, Does it make you feel old yeah. or not? Yeah, it's no, it's a good thing. It's really? a it's a really good thing. I like that I've developed these kind of friendships oh, yeah. and sources. That's your brand. Yeah, it is totally my brand. I was um I left uh, a purchase there one time. I had bought a bolt of fabric. I happened upon a bolt. It was like a treasure. And uh <laughs> and I got to talking to the gal and uh I walked out and left my bag. And by the time I got home, uh, I noticed that I didn't have a bolt of fabric. So I oh. went back and they had left this cute little note on it. And it said, for the quilt lady. Oh. And that just, <laughs> I kept you know, that. The whole thing about the quilt lady is really awesome. As long as you're driving to the place and you're not pushing your own shopping yes. cart there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that that That's takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, yeah, let yeah. me assure you that I am driving. <laughs> awesome. Do, do you yeah. have like a quilt lady walk? You know, is there like this special walk? Here she comes. You There's, know, like, a, shuffle. <laughs> There's a shuffle. There's a shuffle. It's the Quilt Lady Shuffle. <laughs> awesome. It's time for a quick break, but the guys will be right back here on the So You Want to Sell on eBay podcast. 
What's more exciting than starting your own eBay empire with one of Auction Pro Templates' custom eBay store and listing template packages? How about saving yourself $200 when you do it? That's right. Right now, you can take advantage of starting your own totally custom eBay store for the insanely low price of $697 when you use promo code SAVE200 during checkout at auctionprotemplates.com. You still get all of the amazing features and benefits as before, like a custom-designed eBay store and matching custom eBay listing design, video tutorials, software, custom branding, one-year free hosting, and so much more. But now, you get to save yourself 200 bucks doing it. So celebrate the start of something awesome with $200 in savings when you order your very own custom eBay store and listing template package. Go to auctionprotemplates.com and check out all of the features and benefits of having a totally custom eBay store and use promo code SAVE200 today. Have you heard about the success story of Meat Snacker, one of the largest online meat providers around? They've tripled their sales revenue in the past year. Tripled! And they did it with Ecom Dash. Ecom Dash's software optimizes your business by putting all your sales channels in one dashboard, integrating with eBay, Amazon, ShipStation, and more. It even syncs inventory and routes sales orders and forwards tracking information to your buyers, all automated and hands off. Find out how to grow your sales at Ecom Dash. That's E C O M D A S H dot com forward slash podcast. We're back with more tips, insights, and interviews with Ron and Ali. So well, let me ask you this, Chris. Do you, do you, guys, do you ever uh, have the need to like, or not the need, but the desire to maybe teach other people how to do this? I mean, I just, I just see, envision this being something that would be really cool mm-hmm. to teach young kids or, you know, just whatever. Yeah, I do. I, I also don't make fun of me now because of one more thing that I do, <laughs> but I do teach classes both in quilting, beginning quilting and in beginning graphic design, specifically using that Adobe software that we were talking about. So I love to teach. I come from a family that my grandparents were teachers. So it's just like all kind of part of the package. If you don't, you know, if somebody's not buying a quilt or the fabric, maybe they want to learn to quilt. It's just, it's a flexible job. And that's what I love about it is I'm not doing, I'm not making widgets. I'm not doing the right. same thing day in, day out. I've always got something really cool to look forward to. And part of being a quilter is it just, uh, I think there's an unwritten law that, you know, you have to kind of pass that down to the next generation. So I'm well, teaching you know, my niece, my niece, I'm I, teaching her quilt. Cool, cool. I've always, I felt like I, I, that I put in enough hours in a week, but I kind of feel like a slacker after talking to you. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you know, don't, you, don't, because dude, it's, dude. it's really it's like a lot of work, but it's really, it's really not. I mean, it's, it's not. You've mastered so. it, haven't you? I, I vision you doing it one handed while doing the cooking. That's what I'm visioning. But so, is that like, a, is there like an old quilt? So, like the older the better, like a good cheese or a good wine. Is, is it the same in, in, in quilting world? In a way, in a sense, yes. That's I have a quilt that my great grandmother Ovison made, uh, wow. and she made it from uh, old clothes. They had a, a quite a big family in South Dakota. Is my grandmother's mother, right? And uh, she made this. This was during the Great Depression in the United States, and they used, uh, like my husband calls it, they use every part of the Buffalo, you know, how the, <laughs> oh, wow. that's, that's, and I inherited that principle. I'm really big on, um, upcycling and repurposing and putting things back into the revenue stream because I feel like people have so much, I mean, we have so much stuff and it right. just goes unused. And so I kind of take fabrics and release them back into the wild. But to your question, yes. Um, in certain instances, the older, the better um, old quilts are treasures and they're and that kind of goes into uh, that the quilts that I make with the quality of materials that I use, they're called heirloom quilts. So they're actually meant to last generations right. and to be passed down. So, yeah, well, I got one about 20 years ago. My mom bought this for me or she gave it to me. I don't know. I know she didn't Ooh. make it. She's not a quilter, but. I've had this thing and it's like shredded. I mean, it's like my wife is like, Ron, you've got to get rid of this thing. I'm like, I cannot get rid of this thing. I love this thing. And, you know, in the wintertime when it's cold outside, it's the one I use. 
when I'm sitting around watching TV uh, for the 30 minutes that I am every day. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, did I say 30 minutes? But anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. And I just can't I can't part myself. I mean, it's got holes in it. I mean, I've wore the, the thing out. The, I, I should probably bury the thing, but I, I just oh, can't no, get my no, no, there's an trust. there's an emotional attachment to this thing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's what my great grandmother's quilt is. It's it's got some worn patches and, and I can see through to the batting on some of the parts, but that's, it's just been well loved by what four generations, five gen. I have grandkids myself now, so it's been well loved and it's, yeah, it, there's an emotional attachment to them. You got that exactly right. So yeah, apparently cool I haven't loved mine like you have, cause mine's not anywhere near the shape that yours is in. You've had it for 40 years or oh, no, no, for that. That's, I haven't had it for that long. Um, my father actually, gave it to me um after my grand my grandmother passed away um they found it and i never knew until that point that my great grandmother had quilted i thought i was the only one <laughs> i guess oh, not wow. so it's it's, no, I- it, it's a treasure for me it's something that that uh gives me a connection to my great grandmother who was a very sweet loving kind person so well, oh, I'm, cool. feel, I'm feeling really left out here because I don't think I've ever had a quilt, yeah. you know? I think I've oh, had a dysfunctional that. childhood or something. This is not fair. Oh. So you understand, Ali, the emotional attachment because you've yes. got an emotional attachment to something you've never had, oh, okay? No, so I'm that's how I'm really left out. So I'm going to change the question before I cry, you know? So, but where, where are you going to be? Where are you going to be in the future? Are you going to be like the, the, the queen of quilting? Are they going to start calling <laughs> you queen quilter? I mean, where, where are you visioning yourself? Well, I hope that, uh, you know, in about 10 years, five, 10 years, that I will be more prevalent in the industry. My goals in the next year are to start developing my own line of quilt patterns uh, for beginners specifically. So I'm, I'm hoping to do that. I'm, I don't really foresee myself writing a quilt book. I'm not, you know. I'd, I don't think I'd be good at that, but I would definitely like to keep going where I am. And yes, be queen or maybe empress. Oh, or, empress. Huh. Oh. Yeah, dun, empress. Dun, dun, here she comes. Empress Chris. <laughs> yeah. Cue the-, the music. <laughs> yeah, I'd that's it. And a tiara. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this then. Uh, this is like pretty much your life, right? So. Yeah. I'm just curious. Has your daughter picked this up? Does she have any interest in doing any of this? Not yet. Um, no, she hasn't yet, but she's got her hands full with a two-year-old and a six-year-old, my grandsons. So, oh, okay. uh, but I am trying, that's another future goal is to make her a part of the business. My, my daughter is quite a skilled artist um, in a different medium in paints, acrylics specifically. Uh, and she draws like you can't believe, I can't even draw a stick figure. <laughs> um, but this girl can can draw Love it. and I want I want to bring her on board uh, she's aware of this so you know she's this isn't any surprise if she's listening to the podcast but uh, my dream <laughs> why is to would have she a- listen why would she listen to your podcast I mean this is amazing I mean you know uh, this usually tunes <laughs> me out she's probably listening to us but yeah but- <laughs> so so basically I my one of my future goals is to be able to get an employee specifically her uh, to help me run the store and 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 the design business, it's that's a dream of mine. That's trying to build something here for my family that mm. we can, you know, that so I can help send the boys to college and bring them on board and and maybe convince my husband to join the business when I can afford <laughs> to have him run my warehouse. That would be my dream. You know, he might be listening now, too. <laughs> he He's on to your plans now. Oh, cool. He knows. He he totally knows. Um, he's just resisting. I'm just like, oh, yeah. please. We're, and he's like, but I enjoy being married to you, and I'd like that to continue. <laughs> <laughs> he could yeah. be the emperor. He could be like the emperor <laughs> quilter. He could. Well, if he's he the emperor, that. though, then he puts, that puts him above her, oh, I think. Oh, no, no, and we I can't don't, have that. No, but, we'll just make him a prince, oh, prince or something. That's like very a pauper. sexist. <laughs> the yeah. well this has yeah. been fantastic i mean i just love chatting with you chris you just you're just so much fun i mean this is brilliant oh. i can vision you know vision being in your house and there's just all this fabric everywhere and i can just see your eyes slitting through all this fabric as you're quilting and you've got a big smile on your face 
I mean, you just exactly. you just show that whatever you enjoy doing, it's fun, you mm -hmm. know, and you should just go for that passion. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's making T-shirts, whether it's quilting, whether it's building boats. It's all about having yeah. the fun. And that's why we uh, that's why we wanted to bring you on here because you got such an important message. Thank you. I, you know, I really enjoyed the show that you had with the guy who sells the vintage teas, who has the Chris. Barbie doll for the, do you, you know, that guy, the, yeah, the guy, Chris, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. It's the same thing. He had a real passion. He has a real passion. And everybody that I've heard on your show seems to have a real passion for what they do. So that makes eBay a real great fit, I think. That's why for you're absolutely. on the show. You're a perfect fit, Chris, or Empress, yeah. Empress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. take that on as my title Jeez. because it just sounds so good. It can, just can rolls off that? the tongue. Can, can yeah. you put like the last little digits at the end of your name? Chris Empress. I mean, can you do that? Or I probably could. I'm a graphic designer. I could do what I on want. On this right? show, you can, Chris. On this right. show, you can. Well, I'm going to be HRH. HRH, Christine Kellogg-Garrison. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us. We really enjoyed it. We'll post all the notes from today's show on our show notes page, which can be found at www.so you want to sell on ebay fort.com forward slash show notes chris before you go quilting lady quilting queen quilting <laughs> empress <laughs> how can they find you the easiest way to find me is like what ron was saying earlier uh go to the clickcreative.com click on the boutique link to go to my ebay store my all of my social media uh, sites are on there as well uh there are little icons so you can visit my facebook instagram pinterest and twitter i always ask people to join me on my facebook and instagram they can follow along with whatever project i'm making see what's new in the store share their own projects and stuff so go to clickcreative.com and and just go from there brilliant that's lovely i love it they got so i don't know why they got so many errors at the end we me and ron always joke about it flicker twitter inger <laughs> i mean it's like what is it like is this a secret code or, i mean this is brilliant so anyway just go one of those thousands of networks social networks that chris has there we'll put them all on the show notes page thanks once again chris we got to get you back on the show again once you're sure. that empress empress yes yeah. I've enjoyed it. Thank you guys for having me. You guys are fun. Thank you. Ah, Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'm fun. I don't know about Ron. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks, everyone. And um, from everyone here at So You Want to Sell on eBay, I'm Ali Young. And I'm Ron LeBeau. That's all for this episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. Be sure to check out our next episode or any past episodes by going online to so you want to sell on eBay.com. Also, be sure to follow us on your favorite social media sites, Facebook.com forward slash So You Want to Sell on eBay and Twitter at Your eBay Podcast. Thanks for listening. And until next time, happy selling. Have an idea for a topic or know someone who would like to be on the show? Let us know. Just go to www.soyouwantosellonebay.com forward slash interview. We look forward to hearing from you. This podcast was produced in part by Pro Voice Works.